Hey guys, John from Scottsdale Living, and I'm here today with the two ladies from House of Nectar, which is a brand new branding and development company. And we're going to talk more into that for sure. But so we have Sage Aubrey and Lisa Botcher. Betcher. Betcher. I you screwed that up and you already told me <laughs> once. Botched it, but it's yeah. Betcher. <laughs> Betched it? <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. You betcha. You remember that. that. You betcha but it's bet. Betcher. Yeah. <laughs> So really, really, I mean, dynamic ladies, really, really cool. We're going to dig into a lot of cool stuff. But the thing like on the top of my mind is tell me about the peach salsa. I know I'm throwing you a curveball, but you got a recipe for a peach salsa on your website. I think that was amazing. Oh, I do? Yes. Way <laughs> back when. This yeah. was like a very long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yes. totally. Wait, I okay. don't know about the so, nectar salsa. Yes. I will make thy nectar for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So before I started my product-based business, which is uh-huh. before House of Nectar, I was really building culture, which sure. is part of how House of Nectar works and how sure. we build Absolutely. other brands. So anyway, that's how it ties in here. But this peach salsa, first of all, I'm obsessed with peaches. Second of all, I'm from Wisconsin. And there would be this peach truck that Mm -hmm. would come in and they'd have all these drop-off points and people would wait in lines to to get get these bushels of peaches that come in from Georgia. So I would be the one waiting in line and I would tell all of my friends, I'm like, the peach truck is coming, the peach truck is coming. So (laughs) I had every peach recipe there possibly was. I would make salsa, sangria, pies, <laughs> I love like it. everything. I love it. And then I would freeze some of it so that I had my peaches for the rest of the year. So anyway, that's a little tidbit about me. So it looked amazing. So I'm definitely going to so make the good. peach salsa. Like, this like is the, the first I'm hearing about peach salsa. So I'm I'm Three here for it one, right? next summer. I <laughs> like me. the curveball. It's Absolutely. the nectar. <laughs> it's the nectar, yeah, but it it's fantastic. juicy. And so, it sounds like so spicy. I know, right? Ooh, yeah, you can amazing. add a little heat. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, so tell me, like, where does House of Nectar come from? I mean, how do you come up with that name? It's so cool, by the way. We are the world's first, literally. Uh-huh. Um, well, why don't you go for it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I absolutely will. We are the world's first creative well-being brand uh-huh. to fuse energetic healing with brand mastery. So cool. Yeah. We both come from these backgrounds in the fashion industry where we've had to build, we'd, we've had to grind, we've bootstrapped mm-hmm. our way through, and then have since kind of moved into these consulting roles where we've been working with lots of brands. Mm-hmm. Long story short, came together and realized the heart and soul of building brands is about identity. Sure. And that mm-hmm. identity has an energy. It carries an energy. And truthfully, it lives within the founder. Mm-hmm. And if the founder is not energetically healed and aligned we can't even move into the strategy sure. or implementation of sure. anything. So how, I mean, do you help them develop that alignment and develop that, that I guess it's kind of an inner peace or an inner feeling thing. Yeah. We have yeah. some juicy methodology. We, uh, do. we have juicy methodology <laughs> it. and it's not for the faint of heart. Sure. Um, we really enjoy working with these founders who have actually been developing brands for years at a time. Mm-hmm. And what we've realized is like, we've got this sweet spot between seven to 10 year range and at that point, we feel like these founders need a recreative awakening. Sure. Because again, what Lisa had said, it's like we go through so much in the build mm-hmm. that a lot of times these brands become chaotic and so do the sure. founders. And not because there's anything wrong with that. We all go through mm-hmm. these phases. And so we take these founders in into this like safe space and we dig into their inner souls and try to reawaken maybe what's been lost along the way. And what we've found is that conventional methodology doesn't work anymore Mm -hmm. because brands that are really starting to cut through are basically built on culture and Mm -hmm. human characteristics. Mm -hmm. So unless we're getting to the bottom, we can't go at jargon anymore. We've got to go deeper. Mm -hmm. And if we're not going deeper, we're not building culture. We're just saying what everyone else is saying. And we're all sick of it. We're all overstimulated and Mm -hmm. we're all bored. Yeah. Yeah. So now is the time to be like, it's not linear. It's not strategies and systems. It's actually coming back in to like provoke Mm -hmm. and find this creativity to start getting yourself recognized, to be memorable. And it's really powerful work. Sure. And we didn't realize that this, these two passions of ours, our spirituality and then our brand building, we're going to entwine. But they have, and it's, really powerful. So it's got to be like, in, I mean, have, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 28. So I get the ebb and flow. And I, I mm-hmm. feel like when you first start a business, you've got this fire, right? Fire. Yeah. And then it, I, I love the seven year timeline because I mean, you, you get the fire, you get, you build and you, but you grind and 
grind and grind. And I think you kind of forget why you did this in the first place, right? So you guys kind of come in and, and bring that back to the forefront, it seems, a little bit, right? Yeah. And what's really interesting is like how quickly people get out of alignment. Yeah. And we don't even realize that we like need this powerful fire moment totally. again to be like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, this is why we started. Or we got into this very transactional mindset yeah. where it was like, I'm just, it's closing culture or it's this or it's that. And you lose like the soul of yourself mm-hmm. in that. And what we've found is that a lot of these people who run really large businesses, they're like, we actually, we've built it. Mm-hmm. We've made the money. And now it's about operating in alignment. Sure. And there's something that it's just, again, this, it defies all the rules. But when these people get back into alignment, if you thought their energy level was powerful, it's like on a whole other trajectory. Right. And um, these brands that we've been working with and developing and building, they really catapult to the next level, sure. which is what they didn't even realize that they were coming to us to do. Mm-hmm. We give them a little push. It's with love. It's yeah, yeah, always with love and care, but we push them to shed. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a really mm-hmm. interesting word that's come up with, it sparked a lot of interest, right? Because mm-hmm. we put them into a shedding season. Mm-hmm. And what that means is like we, especially as business owners, like you put all this armor on mm-hmm. over that totally. time period of just grinding, mm-hmm. using grit every single day, just kind of doing all of the things. And then we have to take these founders and say, okay, Let's shed this off. Sure. Let's slough this off. Let's Let peel disarm the you. Kind of Let's strip it mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Take off all that control. Mm-hmm. You need to relinquish some control. Let's take off that armor that you're wearing of self doubt or judgment or comparison or imposter syndrome, whatever sure. it is. All of these things have to come back in order for us to create authentic, original strategy from that. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're just chasing the horse. Yeah. yeah you're totally. just hopping on the next trend, yeah. trying to make the next sale, do yeah, all yeah, the yeah, things. Yeah. We've got to like, Really unique, slough right? it off. Yeah. So, I mean, both of you really highly successful in the fashion industry, right? It's mm-hmm. still to this day. So what? how does that, how is that transition from a product development, distribution, global come to this? I mean, that's, that's a big shift, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know, what's really cool about the fashion <laughs> industry and coming from it is that identity mm-hmm. and story. Sure. This is what we're ingrained sells, in yeah. mm-hmm. and that's what sells. When right. you think of Ralph Lauren, you think of romance. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. you think of like Alexander Wang, you think of like New York street style. When you think of Chick-fil-A, you think something they convey an emotion and something, a visual identity and image. Mm-hmm. And what most people are missing is that X factor. Totally. So we are literally taking the genius from the fashion world and mm-hmm. saying, actually, brand owners yeah. need to understand needs. why they need to develop a really strong identity into their brands. And that can be any industry, right? I mean, any industry. Pool oh, service yeah. company. Pool I mean, service. Anything. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And once these brands grasp and wrap their head around it mm-hmm. and they start to implement it, it's incredible the results that they get. Yeah. But no, not a lot of people aren't in the fashion industry, so right. they don't know to take the identity really seriously or how to control it well and how to have that image convey something that people are interested in and want to be a part of. Yeah. And it makes you stand out, right? I mean, it makes, it makes you separate you from out. your competition. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys, I mean, you go into the business, you started up and it was a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. I mean, we've been independently <laughs> developing brands outside of our own brands for over three years, mm-hmm. years but together yeah. we've been doing it for a year now. Underground. Sure. We're an underground brand yeah, <laughs> until, <love it>. <laughs> until now. <laughs> Here it comes. It's out. Yeah. It's out in the open. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's a crazy progression. So where are you finding the people that you work with? I mean, is it context from the industries you've been in before or, or what are you doing? I, and that's what every business owner wants to know, right? Where do you get your, where do you get your clients? How yeah. And I, I think the most beautiful thing is that because our work is so intentional mm-hmm. that our clients refer us to sure. other people that they're like, I know this person and this brand needs what you have. Yeah. And so because we've been working underground and it's been pretty much referral based business, sure. that's how our clients have been finding us mm-hmm. um, through our inner client working. And are you, is there like one industry you seem to be really hitting on or is it kind of all over the board? I think the best thing about it is mm-hmm. what Sage said before is like, there's this X factor that's in this fashion background that we have that every industry needs. And sure. so we especially over the course of the last year, working with these different brands in all these different genres, we've recognized that every single one 
can use this. Probably. So yes, we're launching books. We're launching keynote speakers. We've done killer, master that, classes. Yeah. Right. Um, we've redesigned podcast sets. Mm-hmm. So however it is that your identity or the touch point with your clients or your customers, that's where we can come in and mastermind the right. ultimate image and identity around that. And also the story and what it's conveying. Totally. So you take the whole sexy and the appeal and everything of the fashion industry and bring it to the mainstream. And we implement Mm -hmm. it into the mainstream. And it's something that just generally it's like a creative director's work Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's a, it's a multitude of different things packaged into one. But yeah, there was an aha moment where we were like, why, why don't everyday brands know to utilize this? And this is the strategy that like everybody's missing. Mm -hmm. So I think I agree. It's a killer idea. I mean, the concept is fantastic. I hope you guys just rock it out with everybody for sure. Thank you. It's been so fun. It's been, yeah, just like the best ride so far. And we both thrive in working on all of these different things and stretching our creativity in all of these different realms. But one thing Mm -hmm. I wanted to add to all of that is that we have this very unique way to look at brands as a whole. And mm-hmm. I think that comes from us building brands separately sure. as mm-hmm. solo entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm sure you can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you have to have your eye on everything. You have to be aligning your strategy with everything. Mm-hmm. You the are the one really steering the ship. Mm-hmm. And so we come in to brands and like their whole well-being is important to us. The mm-hmm. wholeness of the brand has to be cohesive, controlled, make sense. And it doesn't matter what type of brand it is. If mm-hmm. it's a pool service company, mm-hmm. if it's a book, yeah, yeah, all of those principles apply. And we have this really keen eye to see the details in every single part of that. And again, that's fashion background trained. Totally. Yeah. So how do you guys, and I mean, one of the hardest things I truly believe in life is partnerships, yeah. whether it's a marriage, significant other, yeah. friendships, whatever. And in a business setting, it's really, really hard. So how's that dynamic? I mean, how have you guys, how have you gotten through it? And just tell us a little bit about it. I mean, there's got to be bumps along the way, but I mean, how do you how do you interact with each other and how do you segment who does what and where and when? Yeah, I mean, I think our, we are, first of all, we're very fortunate sure. that this very. relationship of us coming together was like this dichotomy that I don't think everyone comes into in right. business sure. partnerships where, um, her weaknesses are my strengths and my strengths or my weaknesses are her strengths. Mm-hmm. And what's so interesting is that our personalities just ebbs and flow in mm-hmm. that in a really chill manner sure. where yeah. it's like, we both want the same thing. Right. We both know that here is what happened to us in solo entrepreneurship. And we actually want to be in partnership. Mm-hmm. This is not where one wants to do out the other. It's like, we both need both of our collective energies to bring the best out in our clients. Sure. And so we had a really funny bump in the um, in the journey when we were going through our operating agreement. Oh yeah, because we had a third party attorney come in mm-hmm. and attorneys. <laughs> Sorry. Do we need to say more? No. no yeah, I think, we, I think that's yeah, what we can say. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> but it was like the best. Everything has, and I know again, this may sound fresh and naive, but everything genuinely for us has been the best. Sure. We have so much fun. Yeah. We navigate our clients beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone has demands. Our schedules are so unique because we have seven children between us. Yeah. Yeah. We're I have three. That for sure. Lisa yeah. has four. And so I just don't think I could be in business with someone else who doesn't understand the complexity mm-hmm. of motherhood, but also multiple children sure. motherhood where um, some days we're burning real high and our ship can crash real fast. Yeah, <laughs> Someone's yeah, yeah. sick, someone gets lice, someone, someone's totally. going down, <laughs> husband's traveling. You know, we navigate so much to keep yeah, ourselves right? above water, but yeah. And that's, just, so that's balance, right? I mean, we have and to I, find I balance. think you don't necessarily think about it when you're a business owner, but that balance there is amazing. And the people that can navigate that and do that, I, I always respect the heck out of it. So, I mean, do you guys approach like your work and your business with that balance in mind? And how do you kind of work through it? We do. I mean, balance. we have such open lines of communication mm-hmm. because we just truly, dearly love one another sure. and love what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And that just like, is we're both going after the same thing and right. we have these parallel, chaotic, wonderful lives yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> of raising our and kids at the same together. time. And yeah. it's really come together. But I mean, it's all in divine timing too mm-hmm. because we wouldn't have 
neither of us would have been at this place a few years ago. You know, no. we've gone through the thing solo. We've kind of stretched our wings in different ways. And Had I think it also- ego soul deaths. Yeah. Right. I think it just also came at a really divine opportune timing for both of us. Mm-hmm. And because I'm like, I don't want to do this alone anymore. Right. It's like totally. the best thing to show up to work and be like, okay, here we go. We yeah, got yeah. our little half caffeinated coffees. We're <laughs> going to eat our eggs and <laughs> we're going to conquer out. the yeah, day. There we go. <laughs> and now we're going to go <laughs> right conquer on the, edge. the day. You know yeah. where the line's at. We <laughs> yeah. can't cross it today. But we just also <laughs> yeah. have this really beautiful balance of how we work with one another. Like we, hmm. we just kind of have naturally taken on roles and yes. ebb and flow because I know that she's going through something. So sure. I kind of pick up something or maybe I work late at night and then she gets up early in the morning. Like, early yeah. morning. We, yeah. we just understand each other's schedules. And yeah. I think that's a really key. And I think you have to factor. find that dynamic right. in partnership. Like mm-hmm. I am a true creative mm-hmm. where I'm like wild. My brain goes like, <laughs> when I see a vision, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in a tunnel. I know, you know, and like, so Lisa knows like this chick should not be running the books in the back end <laughs> of the business. And I was really clear for that from the beginning. I yeah, was yeah. like, here's what I suck at. Right. But like, here's what I'm really good at. Sure. So just like, let me go on this ship. And she's like, great. Cause I can do this and get us yeah, organized yeah. and streamlined. Mm-hmm. And you go do that while I'm busy doing this. Sure. And, but uniquely, our visions can, and everything comes together. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're in control of that, but we all she make all blast. these decisions. It's a blend. I mean, we have a blast. A it's that's so crazy. fun. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we haven't <laughs> had difficult conversations because yeah. we have. But when there's an equal respect, mm-hmm. when the egos are in check, yep. mm-hmm. and no one's trying to outprove somebody or this or that or whatever it sure. is that people struggle sure. with. Um, I think a really, I think beautiful things can happen mm-hmm. in partnership. Yeah. So how do you, I mean, coming from the fashion industry, I would really imagine that the ego thing is insane, insane. right? So, I mean, when, when you come to the, and especially when you're dealing with entrepreneurs and founders, really successful people, getting that ego thing is, is in check is really, mm-hmm. really hard. So, I mean, how do you approach that? Like, I mean, I've worked with a lot of different brand consultants and brand marketing companies and everything else. Mm. How do you approach that first meeting? Like, you know, somebody's coming to the table. Is it a breakdown session? Is it hours? Is it a serve? I mean, how do you how do you kind of figure out where you need to go with them? First of all, I just want to start this by saying we love chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And come to us with more chaos. Sure. Because we, we give you a better transformation. Yeah. yeah. We love some ego mm-hmm. because we can feel that energy. Yeah, and yeah, then totally. we're like, okay. We know how to work with this. It's Mm -hmm. okay. And it's okay that someone is feeling that way. A lot of times what we've talked about, it's armor. Mm -hmm. And what's really incredible is that when we break through and we start having breakthroughs with these people and their ego or their chaos or whatever it is, um, that's where we see the soft side and these human characteristics of a real human come out. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we're like, oh, we're getting close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're getting closer. Starts go, in inter- go further inter- into that. Yeah, Let's totally. go deeper into this. Right. And it's not about making someone uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's just about push, continuously pushing them a little bit over the edge, mm-hmm. over the edge. And we have really unique um, healing. We have really unique people that we work with who we bring in mm-hmm. um, to crack these people open. Sure. Do some soul work, soul healing. And also the other thing that I want to say is we're not in this for a quick fix, a sure. quick transformation. Mm-hmm. This is time. And mm-hmm. you were even asking about clients before about how we get them. We truly believe in relationships and mm-hmm. relationship building. And the more time we get with a client, the more that trust comes, sure. Sure. the more that relationship develops, and the more we get to see about them. And it gives us more insights, more energy reading, mm-hmm. more creative direction yeah. because we get to know who they truly are. And sure. so time is just a beautiful thing to be on our side. Yeah. So share a little more, like, I mean, it's a very holistic approach, right? Very and and wellness-based. So how does that play into it versus just somebody that's, you know, this is this is your suite of colors. This is your font. I mean, how do you bring that into the whole thing? Yeah, so that was another aha moment that we had in working with a lot of different mm-hmm. types of clients where um, the way we look at that is that that's very transactional-based. And if someone's just going to send you over 20 questions sure. and you're supposed to answer those properly. And then you the know first everything. step yeah. that's Ridiculous, wrong right? yeah. is they're answering all those questions with jargon. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Oh, we empower people. Yeah. Well, no, doesn't that's everybody, right? Doesn't everybody. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. that's not developing 
culture. It's not mm-hmm. developing something that people want to come in and change their lives to come live right. in it. Totally. So that's the first step where we're like, aha, this is not right. People right. don't even know to tap further into themselves. Yeah. And about a year ago, I was brought in on a really big project. Um, it was a Bollywood, Hollywood based project. Mm-hmm. And I had the extreme pleasure of working with one of the top brand strategists that works with the biggest brands in the mm-hmm. world. And she taught me how to bring clients through and brands through brand therapy sessions. Sure. So I sat with her through all of these sessions and basically protégéed with her. Mm -hmm. And so I started to see firsthand how she dug deeper from a level of jargon. Mm -hmm. And so the first step with us, with our clients is shedding them and then bringing through a brand therapy session. Mm -hmm. And it's really powerful because you start getting to human characteristics. You start getting to the soul of the person. Sure. Then you can communicate with your consumer, your client, or community way better and way more authentically mm-hmm. when it's not just we empower you. Mm-hmm. And then cast the vision of the identity of those colors, of those aesthetics. Like, how do you bring the soul of that to life in mm-hmm. a way where everything makes sense? The color plays into the energy that you're giving. Into the identity. Exactly. The Mm -hmm. fonts are carefully selected. Everything is cohesive about what you're doing. And it's strategic. Intentional. Exactly. It's Mm -hmm. all intentional decisions that play a role in the bigger strategy. And Mm -hmm. honestly, it's all a part of the strategy. Yeah, yeah. Details, nuances are what people are like, oh, I'm just going to overlook. I'm so busy. I'm the solo founder. I'm like doing all the things I can put that to the side. That's actually probably the thing that's the most important. Actually, I'll tell a story about this morning. Um, (laughs) So just the way that people show up is part of your strategy. Mm -hmm. Like people have to know you and your brand and trust them and know what to expect. And so we're strategizing stories for clients and things. And, you know, we're doing it for ourselves because we're living, breathing examples of what we're doing. So I've added this new little twerk color. We call it a twerk. It's a little twerk color. It's this like electric blue. And so I've been like on the hunt for these sunglasses to wear in my stories. And so I kid you not, I like show Sage. I'm like, is this the blue? Is this blue? I can't tell. The the lenses are so dark. I can't see it. But this is how I'm going to show up to really exude the brand and be brand forward. Make brand forward decisions that are for Mm -hmm. longevity, not for a quick win. And keep twerking that color out because... It becomes recognizable, Mm -hmm. memorable. It becomes a part of the brand in a different way when you're nuanced Mm -hmm. in where you strategically place it. So uh, this is going to sound really crazy. And this is my own personal kind of thoughts coming out here. And I think you guys will probably agree with me. But if you rewind branding and creativity, and I'm not the creative person, so it's been really kind of cool to see this. But if you go back two or three decades and the, the onslaught of the internet and online sales and online this and online that, I feel like the, the the passion, the individuality was really lost. Mm-hmm. And like you guys bring that back, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, it's so cool to see that because I really think it's like a huge competitive edge for the small business versus Amazon versus the monster, yeah. right? So, how, you There's know, bringing that out is There's going to be a new era of yeah. awakening for all of these brands really resurrecting themselves mm-hmm. to come back to life and mean something to yeah, someone. Yeah, totally. Because we're in this overwhelmed, overstimulated culture mm-hmm. right now oh, where yeah. you're scroll, scroll, scroll. Everything My is so is fast. buzzing right now. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, so that's going on nonstop. Right? Unless it's crazy. you have a soul, unless you're evoking emotion where someone's like, I relate to you. I aspire to you. I'm motivated by mm-hmm. you. I feel connected in like-mindedness. I trust you. They're yeah. going to go yeah. right past you. Mm-hmm. It has to mean something, which again, goes back to the jargon. You sure. can't just empower the world. And Mm -hmm. really the secret weapon of what really large brands are doing, this is what they invest in. Mm -hmm. They spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring in the best strategists in Mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And target groups and all that stuff, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they create these groups. They Mm -hmm. create the culture. These strategists create the culture first before they ever think about the product that they're implementing into the culture. Sure. The most important thing that we tell our clients is like, do not think product first, think brand first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The moment you start thinking about the product that you're selling, you're hindering your brand. Sure. Because you're, you're, you've got pigeonholing yourself kind of thing, pigeonholing yourself. And then it doesn't become about the culture of what you're building. Mm -hmm. It becomes about the product that you're selling. Sure. And that is one of the surefire ways to have a really short, you're not, you're not going for longevity. You're a commodity. You're You're going to turn and burn. Yeah. You're going to turn and burn. And product could mean 
physical product. <laughs> it could mean a book. It could sure. mean a service. It could mean a class. Whatever it is that you're offering, that can't be mm -hmm. the only thing that you make decisions around. It's got to be the brand. So how do you approach, because this has got to be a really hard one, right? So social media is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's a huge part for every business now. It just is. You know, if mm -hmm. you're not on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, there's a new thing every single day. So how do you approach brand when it comes to the social media in the organic development of social media, right? So, I mean, do you coach these guys up on, this is how you should do it. This is what it should look like. So what's really interesting, when we first came together, we're like, we're not getting into the social game. Yeah, It's not our thing. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, the way that, okay, so first of all, we have this client who's like this most amazing, powerful woman. Mm -hmm. And we were like, okay, a part of your strategy is that we actually need to control your identity sure. on social media. So Was she just all over the place or, or what was it? Um, yeah, just like every brand. Every yeah, brand yeah. is all over the place. Yeah. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. it's a little and it's messy. because she's built trends. Sure. like seven revenue streams. So she's right. like, how in the heck do I even keep this not being yeah, yeah. chaotic? Yeah. So long story short, um, we started to develop her social media about three months in of after strategizing her brand, bringing mm -hmm. her through the shed, the whole kit and caboodle. And we started to develop the social media and we were like, oh, she has grown organically like crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we looked at each other and I was like, we've got to be in social, we've got to be in the social game yeah. mm -hmm. because this is such a huge part of controlling the identity mm -hmm. of these brands and teaching them how to do this strategically. Sure. So we never really considered ourselves social gurus. Right. I don't know that you would even consider us a social guru. We're like the gurus that are like, we'll build your identity. Mm -hmm. So people trust you and your community and what you're Wherever doing form you want to put and that make it on. consistent yeah. with the messaging and the tone and what you're conveying. So um, we actually play in that game now. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't take a lot of clients on because our work is really intentional and someone has to be really in it right, totally. for the long haul. We're mm -hmm. like not a marketing team. We don't do that stuff. Right. But we will build your identity so mm -hmm. people trust you and what you're selling and your sure. product and package you beautifully. So we are running in that ship now. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's about packaging and positioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about us saying, run this as an ad, yeah, boost yeah, yeah, this, totally. do this. It's Go get 100,000 so, followers. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. is about if someone, let's say someone comes here, sits down, has a conversation with you, they're going to go, where are they going to look you up? Yeah, yeah. They're going to look you up on Instagram. 100%. Are you yeah. packaged and positioned to be exactly who your brand forwardness right. is? Then if they, they trust you, your message. Mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. trust you because that has built cohesion and credibility, they might click over to your website. Is your website packaged and positioned yeah, and yeah. cohesive with this downline of flow, what they're right? doing. So mm -hmm. this builds out this beautiful karmic circle of what yeah. a brand is. But honestly, the first place that people go right now to look anyone up is on social. Yeah. So it has so yeah. much value, but value, I want to just say it, it can be valued with disconnecting yourself from trying to play the game. Sure. It's mm -hmm. really about building your identity, mm -hmm. positioning yourself, building that trust, that credibility, credibility, playing into your brand's energy, and organically, something's going to come of that. Yeah, sure. and ensuring that the message is clear. Mm -hmm. Because the message can become convoluted really quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And you can confuse people like crazy. And when you're confusing them, we all know this, you're losing business. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so that's what we love to do. We're just like <laughs> we're launching a book right now. And it's like, we are not, but we're launching one yeah, yeah. for a client. For a client. Yeah, totally. yeah. And it's so fun for us to see the before and after because yeah. you're like, wow, there's so much chaos. And then when we come in there and package them, you're like, oh, it's just beautiful to look at their feed because sure. it's clean and you understand what they're right. doing. And it's just, yeah, so we're here we are. Yeah, I love it. so I mean, literally, yeah. where we any, thought we weren't going to be, totally, but we are. So if anyone is listening and they're like, "Okay, I'm launching a book, I'm launching yeah. a brand, I'm a personal brand, I'm starting a podcast," and you're like, "Okay, I need to be positioned and packaged. Mm -hmm. Like, I want my Instagram to be set on fire. Totally. Yeah. We're your girls. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> We've got a little process methodology mm -hmm. to take you through and really spark something." Big. So isn't it really cool to see kind of the evolution of like the master class and the individual development? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that stuff just didn't, I mean, I remember when, when COVID first hit, 
we're all sitting at home. It's like, what the hell are we going to do? For the, you know, we're locked down, whatever. And do you remember when like masterclass.com was like first out? And it's oh, like, we oh love my gosh, this is yeah. so We were cool. all freaking out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and all of a sudden there's Jane Goodall in there and there's the chefs and everything. It was so cool. cool. <laughs> but while that is taking off, right? Yeah. And I mean, that's a whole market that needs everything that you do. Yeah. I mean, so building that brand is kind of, you know, going away from the corporate brand to the individual brand. I mean, how do you identify the difference or do you incorporate them both? I mean, how does that kind of work? You know, everybody, like we were saying, everyone needs this sense of identity Mm -hmm. infused into what they're doing. And it was really interesting because we, one of our very first clients when we came together as a partnership um, was a corporate keynote speaker that wanted to launch a masterclass. And her ideas of before coming to work with us on it, we were like, oh no, this has to tell the whole story of your brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is not something that you just go up there and wing it and throw it out and there. Record. Yeah. And record. And yeah. record. Totally. Like it's all playing into the bigger vision part mm-hmm. of your brand. So we really came in and totally mastermind the storyline, what people were buying into, right. how we sold that story to them, what the backdrop of that looked like. The aesthetic like. of mm-hmm. the story. Yeah. The aspiration. And it's yeah. so important when you're packaging, whether it's a live webinar series sure. or it's a master class, that you are conveying what people are buying into. Mm-hmm. If you are a seven-figure keynote speaker, we need to, you straight away, we need to see that image and that identity mm-hmm. as a seven-figure keynote speaker. Totally, right. If you are a performer, an artist, we need to see your artistry in, in full-blown fire, mm-hmm. right? So I think it's really important. And a lot of people don't understand, well, oh, I can't just go up there. And I mean, you can go up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the ultimate goal is to be able to sell this to right. people who don't know you and to buy in that they trust that you are that person that's going to sell them into this next level of themselves. Right. I think it's the greatest example right now of either you make a product forward decision or mm-hmm. you make a brand forward yeah, decision. Yeah. And if you're going to be brand forward and really build, mm-hmm. all of these details matter. This well, and it's mind blowing, especially like the speaker thing. You touch on that a, look, a little bit, but like look at Gary Vee, right? So this mm-hmm. is a guy that everybody knows. Hell of a brand. Yeah, hell of I, a brand. I have no idea what he sells. I mean, I'll be honest, gosh, with you, I, I, what does he sell? I mean, I know it's coaching, but I mean, just such an amazing brand that people buy into it that I'm not even sure what the guy does. I think I if, actually think he sells <laughs> the truth. Yeah. At this point, I was yeah. going to say, I think people know him for his energy mm-hmm. and his I truth. think they know who he is and because right. of how they've made, he's made them feel. And what's important is that I feel like people feel like they trust him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, without a doubt. Because he's authentic yeah. and he's spitting it true. Right. And he shows up over and over and over yep. and over. In a really yep. consistent manner. Yeah. Yeah. Like All when he shows up, you always know how Gary Vee's going to show up. Yep. Yep. And so there's no confusing us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really powerful. And that's sure. one strategy for him. Oh, right? 100%. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, and each individual person is a different strategy mm-hmm. because everyone has different gifts. Right. And it's like, and until you unveil those gifts, we don't know how you should be totally showing up. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. authentic to you. And mm-hmm. that's the whole purpose of our, of, our, of our work is originality. Sure. Let's not cookie cutter ourselves again. Because we couldn't sit in front of somebody and be like, oh, well, that Gary V, that worked for him, so it's going to work for you too. Right. Yeah. Right. We're kind of like the anti Most likely of that. not yeah, yeah, yeah. going totally. to work Got to break you. it down and do it the way that works for you, of course. Yeah. 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 So it's so, kind of funny to see. I, I mean, I feel like it used to be corporation or corporate branding was really, really important. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be kind of the shift that's going into the the individual branding. I mean, you guys kind of mm-hmm. see that across the board or? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's funny. even predictions that this individual branding utilized as marketing is going to get to like, I don't know, 10 times into the 30 billion yeah, within yeah. the next few years. So this ability for anyone to create a brand, for mm-hmm. anyone to start something, to write a book, to have a class, it's that's exciting. this new wave of right. what's coming out. And that is where also consumers are finding their information and that's who they're buying from. Sure. So no matter what, like your personal identity needs to have an actual identity and mm-hmm. brand behind it because that's just the way the world's moving. Yeah. yeah. Even and more than the be, corporation, right? It's yeah, person, exactly. You know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. it needs to be invested in. And mm-hmm. even if you own a business with co-founding partners, sure. yeah, those founders should both independently have Personal yeah, brands. Their own brand. yeah. Yeah, Everyone should be developing themselves and 
packaging and positioning mm-hmm. themselves as an expert or an authority sure. or an author or whatever it is that you are, are your artistry. I mean, it can be anything. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really important that people jump on it mm-hmm. and jump on the investment in it before it becomes like the next thing that everyone's doing. Yeah, because yeah, totally. you've got to be ahead and cutting edge mm-hmm. of a lot of these trends. And sure. that's basically what we do really well is packaging yeah, no, personal brands. Absolutely. So where do you think that heads to, right? So I mean, 20 years ago is you brand Ford, you brand GM, BMW, I'm just using cars for yeah, whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, totally. You know, McDonald's, whatever. But now you brand the people. So it's flow from whatever the insurance company is. I don't even know, but I know flow, yeah. right? So I mean, when the flow is gone, <laughs> or that individual, how does that carry on? I mean, what happens at that point? And that's a really deep question for you. But um, how do you do that? What's the progression? You know, I think when you build culture around sure. a brand, around that, yourself, that mm-hmm. spirit, that energy can live on, and that can transfer into in bigger ways, further ways down the timeline of where it will all go. Sure. But like Ford's not going to go away, right? Because the founder has been gone, right? Mm-hmm. Like they've yep, built such this. Evil. presence mm-hmm. for themselves mm-hmm. that they can continue on. And I think evolution is a huge point in this. I mean, we truly believe in brand transformation. Sure. It's never a, oh, we've got the strategy. So that means that's going to work forever. It's kind of a continuing of unfolding and learning and then unlearning to keep moving with the times. Because just how you said like, oh, today is way different than it was 20 yeah. years ago in business. In 10 years that's going to continue happening. But yeah, there is value in having identity around what you're doing. Because just like you said, with the flow example, someone you're connecting with someone, right? right? Yep. So you have to have these human characteristics of your brand, whether you are visible and face forward in your brand or not, mm-hmm. that yeah. human aspect of it has to sure. be living. Sure. Yeah. What's well, community nowadays, right? So I yeah. mean, people buy into community and people, and I feel like they've gotten away more from the brand and more to the person and connect. And that's what you guys build is the trust and the integrity and the, you know, and the concept and the connection with the people, right? Yeah. yeah and it's like, it's really hard for a lot of people to be like, oh, I'm going to come out and be forward yeah. facing of my yeah. brand. Like I built everything to hide. Right. And I think sometimes people do build to hide, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's interesting because things are changing so much and so quickly that now it's like, if you want to keep evolving, there's a certain amount of yourself Sure. That if you're running all these brands and businesses, that people want to know who at who is at the heart of that. Yeah, yeah. Who's We're more wheel, interested. Right? Mm-hmm. We want to know who's behind the, the wheel. Story. We want How the do they story. operate? Yeah. Is it authentic? Mm-hmm. Do we have a genuine connection with them? Does that? Do we still want to support them? You know, right. it's like it's right. it goes. It's so multi layered mm-hmm. that I think it, that's why it's important that people be like okay. We actually were just talking with a potential client last week that's like, oh, I've got to come out of hiding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we're not the ones to tell you to do it. You've got to make that decision on your own. Sure. But my goodness, yeah, at a certain point, somebody kind of has to do the front facing. Mm-hmm. And I and I I say that with like a we don't all want to put our head on the chopping yeah, yeah, block. Yeah. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But um today the way it's evolving mm-hmm. is that everyone's kind of starting to put their head on the chopping block. Yeah, yeah, they want a person. I mean, the and, public wants a person out there. Yeah, right? and I think what else is really interesting is that like, a lot of people are moving into multiple revenue streams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when you're building and developing brands, um, a personal brand allows you to go off and develop sure. other streams of business. Yeah. And I think... That's actually brilliant. I haven't even thought of that. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think it's really important in building a culture around yourself mm-hmm. allows you to start developing all of these other little interesting avenues where you can start. What's well, what you said a minute ago, income. right? So build the brand before you even think about the product. Exactly. Because I mean, once you have the brand, then you can bring on whatever product is you're looking for, right? This is what you Opportunities can do. come yeah. when you position yourself. Totally. Too. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And actually what comes <laughs> out of a culture is way better mm-hmm. than out of someone just being like, oh, I'm going to package this and yeah, yeah, put my yeah. name on it. It's like, no, develop it. Right. Yeah. Make it meaningful. Right. Yeah. And it's you're, you can sell twice as many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. So we deal with a ton of small businesses on a regular basis. So we'll, a couple small business questions for you. Yes. What is your biggest hurdle? I mean, what what do you mm. do individually, what do you guys dread? Because the, there's something yeah. that you just dread about. It's like, oh my gosh, it's it's the first of the month. I got to do a and l whatever. What is it that, that, you know, that is you struggle with the most as a business owner? 
Uh, you guys are loving okay. life way oh, too okay. much. <laughs> so here's, <laughs> like, here's okay, a really good we one. Yeah. We are in such a cutting edge. We are like before the time. Yeah, yeah. This brand, when people think about bringing energetics and then also brand mastery together right. in strategy, it's getting people to really understand how this is going to improve them and their sure. business. And so I think that's one of the things of being like, how in the heck do we message this so people understand right? that yeah. we're brand healers and mm -hmm. we will remedy their brands and heal them? Um, so I think that's like a hump that we're always like, okay, what's our widget? What's right. our strategy? Right. How, do like, we how do are this? we going to say it? How can we say it differently? How can we improve on that? Yeah. On a totally different note, I feel like one of the things that I struggle with the most that I think some business owners will relate to is like, not being able to turn it off. Yeah. So mm. I am just like, even last night, I'm like, I didn't sleep because I was up thinking about all these things. Yeah. Doing, like, oh, I have an idea for this person or like some, you know, I'm really busy with four mm -hmm. little kids. So sometimes ideas only come to me when I should be resting. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because that's the only totally. time my brain has the availability to like receive right. these messages and allow my creativity to work and flow. Because, you know, yep. during the day, we're really busy with meetings, with creating things for people. So mm -hmm. I think just turning off, you know, I do have really good well-being practices that mm -hmm. ground me. And I adore time with my family. I mean, sure. my kids and my husband mean everything to me. So I spend time with them, but I'm still just like racing. Cooking. And yeah, you're cooking. Yeah, that's because absolutely. I love what I do. And right. I don't, I, I like love it. I don't want to turn it off. But at the same time, it's like, I wish I had a little off switch. Yeah. That and it goes back like, to the okay, balance, well, right? Yeah. I mean, and the balance is, is, has to be intentional. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you, how do you guys accomplish that? I mean, I, you have family, you have kids, you have business, you have partners. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you set time aside for yourself? Do you, is it yoga? Is it pickleball? Is it meditation? Is it reading? I mean, what do you do in your life to, to separate yourself from your business? Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard because right now we're in like launch mode, yeah, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. like Consumed, our, yeah. someone, this really successful woman once told me, she's like, you've got to decide what the rubber balls are and what the glass ones are. Mm -hmm. And at any point, that's really cool. I like which that. ones yeah. are you, which ones can you drop and right. which ones cannot drop. Mm -hmm. And so on a weekly basis, I'm like, what is it? What are my rubber balls this week? Or what are the glass ones? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kids. Sometimes it's husband. Sometimes work is a priority. Right. Um, sometimes it's taking care of myself and being like, I've got a nail appointment this week, a hair appointment. Yeah, yeah. I got to get all this stuff done so I feel good about yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just a matter of every week. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what we're, what are we, what are we juggling that sure, week, mm -hmm. and what are we willing to drop. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my bed doesn't get made and it drives me nuts. But yeah. I'm like, peace that's be with week. my bed. <laughs> that's that <laughs> week. That's the week. Yep. Um, but I also like for me, I've started to wake up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I love my sleep. But I also am starting to really enjoy like a 5 a.m. wake up call. Yeah, yeah, because there's nobody around, right? No one's around. Yeah, yeah. Um, right now it's work mode for me, but eventually I would love to switch that over to working out for 20 or 30 minutes sure. a few times a week um, just to really start taking better care of myself. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, on I, I, can't, I don't have the expectations that it's like it has to be like that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I can't be that rigid sure. because mm -hmm. my life doesn't allow rigidity. Right. Totally. Got to be fluid as moms. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent, of course. Yeah. yeah, and our and so yeah, I, I don't. I have a really hard time finding balance, especially as a creative. When mm -hmm. I want to go into like my funnel and my tunnel, sure. it's really hard for me to like get out of that mode. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think putting my phone down when I come home, mm -hmm. literally being like Sage, turn it on like sleep mode, <laughs> yeah. and just cook dinner and like make lunches and be present. And do homework with the kids sure. and run around after my little three-year-old. You know, it's like, I, it's it's literally a, like I have to tell myself, right. turn it off. And I think men actually compartmentalize way better than women do. According to my wife, I can block her out pretty well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think, yeah, we probably, it seems like we do. She doesn't. And I'm sure maybe you ladies are the same way. It's like, she's always going and thinking everything's coming at her. And as a yeah. guy, I'm pretty good at like sitting on the couch and just letting everything else go. So yeah, maybe I'm you're not, right. I'm not good at that. Yeah. But yeah I'm trying to be more like chill yeah. where it's like, all right, the house doesn't have to be perfect. Sure. You know, those are my rubber balls yeah, where yeah. I'm like, it's totally. the house. Right. And if that's what it is on a week to week basis right now, then I've just got to like, let it go. Sure. Sure. Um, but it's, it's not for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, um, well, Working, entrepreneurship is not for everybody, right? It's, not it's a whole different thing. for everybody. Yeah. And I learned that it wasn't for myself, just for myself. Right. I really, like, craved 
having connection with yeah. somebody mm-hmm. and also craved having connection with our clients as well. Like mm-hmm. I was so mm-hmm. lonely building in a silo by myself for so long. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's just a matter of knowing what's good for you sure. and trusting that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. totally. similarly, we have the same ebb and flow juggle mm-hmm. of what can be juggled and what yeah, can't yeah, be juggled totally. this week. But Sage mm-hmm. always says, I'm like the widget of high performance habits. <laughs> I love it. Um, I've mm-hmm. really learned over the years having one, two, three, and then four kids. Yeah. That, like <laughs> I've, I've got to operate up here. Right. And there's a lot of things that have to happen for me to sure. operate up here. So right. I have a lot of well-being practices that mm-hmm. I'm like, if I don't do these, I'm not going to be able to do the yeah, things yeah, totally, or be the person totally. who I want to be. So, you know, I'll work out. I have all my little herbal supplements and sure. all my little yeah. drinks. I, I mix up these little drinks that I take to keep my body supported. Um, even just having out time outside or doing right. meditation and the, the other week. I mean, leading up to launch, we've been, you know, oh, yeah. go mode, right? Yeah, right? And so I told Sage, I was like, I'm going to go home tonight. I am going to mix up my little nighttime drink. I have like my magnesium, my electrolytes, yeah. my things. I'm going to get in my infrared sauna blanket. I'm going to turn on a meditation and I will sleep. And sure yeah. enough, it's like I, I just have to have those things that I know that I can default so you to. visualize it. That it, help yeah. me rewind, mm-hmm. that help me unwind, that help ground myself when sure. everything's going at a million miles an hour. And so I really, truly... And protective about those things in my life because I want to feel really good too. I don't want to yeah, be yeah. doing these things and I'm like, actually, I'm so burnt out and I'm unhealthy and yeah, yeah. Totally. you know I'm struggling with all these things. And so I just I really placed a lot of value on that, especially in the past couple of years because I went through a time where I didn't feel great yeah, and I right? was really burnt out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I learned from that how I could not and did not want to operate. So as I mean, this is really interesting thing. So it's really hard to have partners. So as small business owners, as business owners going through a launch, Mm -hmm. do you guys set time aside to like the two of you sit down and say, because I mean, you get caught up in work, right? You get caught up in clients, you get caught up in this and creativity and ideas. Do you sit time, set time aside for you two to sit down and and plan your business and your company? I mean, is that, is that on the, on the clock, on the calendar? We do because it's, we really want to build a multidimensional brand here. So we feel like this wellness, non-toxic environment is kind of a lifestyle Sure. that sure. Um, it's really important for us as product-based building brand builders ourselves mm-hmm. that eventually we would love to have product within everything mm-hmm. that our culture is at the House of Nectar. So we spend, we do a few hours a week, we are constantly strategizing Love our yeah. social media, our identities, the story that we're telling, the mm-hmm. culture that we're building. Um, on the weekends, we have swim dates with our kids. Love it. So, yeah. you know, wherever the husbands weekend, are in the pool with them, yeah, yeah. we're like, and you guys we're are in the strategizing corner cooking up. Yeah, and it. we're yeah. <laughs> working on House of Nectar. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> however we can find the time to sure. build and develop. But that was one of the other really big things that we wanted was like, a lot of agencies build themselves off the success of their clients. Yeah. Sure. And because we kind of want to be more underground mm-hmm. and um, anti-agency and anti-agency, sure. we want to develop this in a really different manner. Mm-hmm. Whereas like people can follow along on the story and see the strategy unfolding, Sure. see the story unfolding. Mm-hmm. And so it was really important for us to build a brand where we actually were teaching like our clients and the people that come within the house. Yeah, exactly. How, how to really doing, develop yeah. a strategy that really it's cuts through. Great. I love it. So that's got to be really hard to focus on and do though on a regular basis. I mean, so you're working with the clients and everything. I just everything. think we're a little crazy. We're, yeah. Yeah. Like, the crazy part always helps. Like, you know, it? is it hard? I'm like, maybe, but we love it and we <laughs> don't we love stop it. and we just infuse it into everything yeah. because we truly both see the vision of where this is going and we're, even though we have this history of mm-hmm. brand building and we're this far into it, this is that new fiery thing that we're working yeah. on where sure. we have that lit up again. We're yeah, like, yeah. okay, we're like one You're year excited. in. Like, into it. Yeah. Let's go. Year two. Here's the stuff that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so even though we're like, okay, we've had the grit, yeah. we've had the grueling, we've had the schlepping of all the things, the sloughing, like, let's yeah. go. We're, sure. we're back in the spark mode. So the crazy side question that has really nothing to do with brand building, but I've been asking a lot of business owners this. So smartphones, good, bad. 
I mean, like, don't you feel like sometimes we should, there should be a way to just put that thing away for a bit. It's all, all consuming. And how totally. do you deal with that? I mean, it's a yeah. constant interaction. It's a constant interruption in your life, mm. you know? Yeah. I mean, I have a little bit of a backstory. So when I was building Sage Aubrey, my previous business, mm-hmm. I built it kind of like very front facing, kind of like an influencer. I brought sure. everyone in on everything that I did. Mm-hmm. And in about year seven, I was burnt out and the least creative I'd ever been in sure, my life. Sure. From that point, I went into this like soul death creative awakening where I was like, okay, I actually don't want to be an influencer. I, I'm a creative like beast and mm-hmm. I've got to protect that. Sure. So now everything I do every single day in any way that I build, I'm like, how am I protecting my creativity? Right. And that is to not be stimulated. Lisa can vouch for this for me. I mm-hmm. do not, I do not consume content. hmm um, which is, I know sounds crazy in this sure. era that we live in where I want to support everyone's content, but I actually don't consume it. And it's not because I don't dis it's not because I dislike it. It's mm-hmm. actually because it hurts my brain. Yeah, yeah. I'm the person that needs to be in stillness mm-hmm. in silence because my, my creativity comes through very intuitive drop-ins. Sure. So if I am not quieted and my nervous system is not at peace, mm-hmm this creativity doesn't flow in. Sure. And so I do it to actually protect myself and also my clients so I can best create for them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I mean, what does that involve? I mean, like, do you put the phone away? Do you just check out? Is it like, you know, your time and nobody interrupts it? I mean, how do you, how I do like you literally that? post and then I don't consume other people's content. Sure. Sure. And I know that sounds really rigid, um, but it's the only way that I know to mm-hmm. not get sucked in. And then I'm also like, okay, don't get sucked in because I want to create it. Sure. And I don't want to be consuming it. Following. Right. Because yeah, if totally. I'm consuming it, I don't want to take other people's ideas either. I want yeah. it to come from like a really natural source. Right. right. So I'm so, um, that's one of the things I'm like hyper rigid on. Sure. Of myself. And it's been three years of training myself out of mm-hmm. consuming content. Sure. Wow, so, that's that's hard though, right? Real okay, hard. Okay, I'm going to yeah. sell you out a little bit. Sage <laughs> consumes a tiny bit of content and it's when she sends <laughs> I don't me what, I know what it is. <laughs> a recipe yeah. or she sends me a little um, Buddha. Buddha monk <laughs> who eats bananas yeah. and nuts because that's what we live off of. Also <laughs> eggs and half caffeinated coffee. Yeah. Um, she'll send me like something funny, but she's really but, good like, about meditative. it. Meditative. Yeah. yeah, she's really good about it. And I think there's pros and cons to having technology accessible Mm -hmm. to you. I, as like a creative brand strategist, I like to have a pulse on Mm -hmm. what is status quo because I'm always trying to push past that. What's trending? So I, Mm -hmm. you know, the line can get blurry. Mm -hmm. You can get really sucked in and go down a rabbit hole really fast. But I have been proactively utilizing time on my phone in a way where I'm like, I am doing research. Mm -hmm. I am looking at these things and now it's time to turn it off. But let's be real. We are very busy women, mothers juggling everything. It's so So great to have have my phone on me because I have to leave early at the end of the day, jump in car line. I sit parked in car line for 20 minutes and I can be on my phone getting stuff done. So it's definitely a balance. Yeah. And you know what else is really interesting, which we try to coach our clients through a lot too, is that at a certain point, Mm -hmm. You've got to stop consuming content, put it down, tap into where we're going, yourself and your originality so we can create something that's authentic. Mm -hmm. We cannot be in this culture anymore where we're like, oh, what she did, what he did. I'm going to infuse that and do it for myself when maybe it's not even what's going to resonate with you or your community. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, I've I've sit down with my clients and I'm like, you've got to stop, stop. consuming yeah. this mm-hmm. content because you're trying to become this person. And plus even it's though, just fake. So much of that content is just not real. It's right? just yeah, not real. Exactly. It's yeah. not fake. And so, yeah. So it's this interesting ebbs and flow mm-hmm. yeah. of what do we really need and what do we really, the rubber ball, what sure. can we push out yeah, yeah, totally. um, to really set focus on our own tunnel vision. I think it's really important that mm-hmm. if you don't have like the eye of the tiger and you're not like, nope, I'm not going to consume that. Nope, I'm not going to watch things for a week. Just try it for a week. Sure. See what happens. I also do want to say more peaceful. You become more. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like (laughs) things start to like drop in again. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, like my heart rate elevates going through TikTok sometimes. It's like, what is going on here? This is ridiculous. 
it's I think hard it's to do. hard yeah. to do it alone too, because yeah. experiencing this with our clients, it's like everyone kind of needs this reminder that they have it within themselves. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you don't need to be finding this externally. You don't need to be copycatting what's like going on. It's like, in. no, let us remind yeah, yeah. you, you have this. Bring out the What you have is a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring it out in its truest form. And so we're like these little spiritual guides sure. for our house of nectar clients too, because you know, everyone needs a little nurturing. Sure. So let's go. We'll go one side question. We're okay. going to go to Woo-hoo. food because it's like one of my favorite Ooh. tops in the world. Yeah, we like we'll give it. a shout out to Kirsten Chestnut, who you guys know. Yeah. It's amazing. Hey, girl. So unfortunately we can't pick Chestnut. Give me your other favorite restaurant. Uh, Cause I'd love her, but we, mm. what's another one that you love going to? Ooh, yeah. Okay. Your, so I eat a lot of eggs. Okay. And I don't know <laughs> if it's like my favorite restaurant, but it's one that has like a good vibe. Uh-huh. So I love Zen K at okay. the Fashion Square yep. because I love like a Frenchy vibe. Mm-hmm. I love that they play like Buddha bar music sure. and I can like eat eggs and work at the same time yeah. and we can like have a glass of Prosecco at, at the, the end, end of, of the day on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like, Tuesday it hits all noon. the vibes. <laughs> yeah, no, we watch so, the people who do that. We're like, yeah. that would be cool. So yeah, yeah, those yeah. are my peeps. <laughs> I love them over there. Yeah. Um, oh, I know the, the manager really well. So I've got a shout out to Zen K. Sure. We love you, Zach. So, and we love your eggs. I love it. And the Prosecco. Yeah. It's the best. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Definitely answer number one. Um, I'm new here. Okay. I yeah, just so moved here this summer, right? but I have to tell you that we love the Collins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have, let me just tell you exactly what to order. Yes. You uh-huh. are going to order on the appetizers, their onion dip. Yeah. It's fantastic with these chips. To die for. Then you're going to get a salad, whichever one you want, and you're sure. going to split it. And then you're going to get their spicy chicken pizza with gluten-free crust. Uh-huh. And just tell Loving us. Loving it. It's so it's good. It's her favorite. Fantastic. It's so good. You have cool. to go. Cool ambiance, too. I love it. So this is this is Sage and Lisa from the House of Nectar. Yes. Tell us all your all your details. Hashtags, Instagram, cool. websites, all drip, that drip. stuff. Yes, we will drip, drip the good. So <laughs> visit us at www.thehouseofnectar.com. Mm-hmm. Follow along on this story and the strategy sure. through at the House of Nectar on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You can follow myself at the Sage Aubrey <laughs> yep. on Instagram. You can follow me at lisa.betcher on Instagram. And when you are visiting our website, there's going to be a little pop-up that drips up to you. Put mm-hmm. your email address in sure. there. Um, that's the best way to really watch this story unfold and stay connected to everything that we're about to build. Fantastic. Thank you so much, ladies. And we'll have all the details down below. So it's going to be in the description. We'll have all the contact information. The spelling. You guys are amazing. <laughs> we will get it right. The pronunciation, the spelling, all the contact stuff. And I'm excited. Let's let's keep in touch. Let's keep watching. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you Thank so you much for so having much us. Absolutely. This is so fun. Yeah, you guys. This we was awesome. It. Cool. Yeah.